Hey, y'all. For us creatives, making the content we enjoy requires as much imagination as well as inspiration that is often lifted from the sources that have surrounded the creations. Many things can spark a game-changing idea, and many of those ideas inspire more, especially in the media we consume. We can be lost in swirling visuals, impactful characters, innocuative music scores, and thrilling scopes that immerse us in which this series is highlighting. So come join us as we count down those of interest in our top 10 creative influences, volume one and later, depending on later entries. A few rules. A creative influence can be just about anyone or anything, whether it be an artist, illustrator, director, cinematographer, musician, production designer, costume designer, animator, etc. The sky is the limit on who is worthy of being a creative influence. If at all any of the entrants down the line have been involved in any reprehensible acts of problematic actions, they will be immediately discarded as addressed in a later video in this series. We will have no room for opportunists, flakers, and abusers in our work. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Say, remember the board game Cranium? Or the Disney series Teacher's Pet? And been around in the LA art scene from here and there. You might have came across art from none other than Gary Baseman. Born to now Ukrainian Holocaust survivors, Baseman grew up with a life instilled with values that involved human rights for many. It reflected in his broad expressive areas of work with a unique style he made all his own. My first introduction of his style was in the Disney series Teacher's Pet, and how it appeared much distinct from the other shows that I found rather interesting. Though I find most of his illustration work more fascinating, other than having a good run, plus his movie that wasn't that much remembered. Nonetheless, Gary Baseman starts this list off the right way. For the past few years, we've been in done to with more creative designs from this many generations finest artists. But one of note we will highlight is the one and only William Joyce. William Edward Joyce, a native of Shreveport, Louisiana, Joyce is an accomplished artist and illustrator whose retro West style has struck a chord in the past 30 or so years. And his fascination with film, which led him to study the medium, being a familiar territory, many things were either adapted from his works and many classic works such as Toy Story as a creative consultant and applying his influences on productions such as Roly Polioli, George Shrinks, Robots, Meet the Robinsons from one of his books, as well as the adaptation of Rise of the Guardians from DreamWorks. Whatever the case may be, you can bet Joyce has many things to sell in store. Chances are, if you've played a game from Disney Interactive, you might have gotten lost in pretty catchy composed beats. And that someone moved on to some grander work, such as Medal of Honor, the Lost World games, and then making tunes for a licensed game based on a spy drama, and hit it off to grand creative heights. That's right, I am talking about... Michael Giacchino, a filmmaking album of SVA, Giacchino sees many opportunities which paid off with bold rewards with his bold brand style of music that fits any genre for films in the popular culture lexicon. Such as animated movies in which he was awarded many accolades for sci-fis, adaptations, licensed superhero films, and more recently, 
Giacchino did more recent work with Marvel to display his directorial feats with Werewolf by Night, which has received well in stride. Here's to more future work from this talented composer. If you're familiar with this, and later this, then you're familiar with cartoonist and scriptwriter Sue Rose. An album of two schools, Rose and her collaborator Joanna Ferrone worked on many notable creations such as creating Fido Dido, which PepsiCo licensed for their products. She created a comic strip which was the basis for her first ever cartoon series created by a sole female creator at the time, Pepper Ann. And it was pretty unique in her style, and those on board would create even more noteworthy content. And in her other series, Angela Anaconda, she co-created with Ferroni, where she did not only co-create it, but she supplied the voice of the titular character as well. As the series earned many rewards throughout its run, she loved a creative career and accomplished as much as she did. This entrant shares some similarities with yours truly. We're both Haitian Americans who are born in New York to Haitian immigrant parents. And it ends here, unfortunately. But for our guy, he wrote the book of revitalization and branding, thanks to his many experiences and many notable brands but none other than Nintendo, where he sealed the stamp of intensity and marketability. Is your body ready? Well, you better be, because number six is dedicated to one Reggie fils -a -me. A graduate of Cornell University, which led him to notable companies such as Pizza Hut, MTV, and VH1, which granted him experience enough to access the next step. Nintendo. Joining the gaming icon in 2003, he couldn't have been in much good time, as Nintendo was in dire straits thanks to no part of the low sales of the GameCube compared to their competition at Sony and Microsoft. At one point, there were plans to revitalize Nintendo's image to make it more hip, but Reggie halted those plans by keeping the brand true to itself while elevating itself and him to a more recognizable status. In 2004, getting the status of Chief Operating Officer and later President, he showed the world that Nintendo was still ready for the big time. His implementations for addressing the gamers that were unrecognized and forgotten was key for the Wii success. While being a household name among the other legends of Nintendo such as Miyamoto, Iwata, and Sakurai, etc., Though he resigned in 2019, his impact will be remembered for years to come. Okay, take a stroll while we return after this. Huh, kept you waiting, huh? Now we're back. Hey, hope y'all enjoying this countdown. We're halfway down and halfway to go. In the meantime, subscribe and now let's get this list going. Okay, now we'll get a little strange here, but this entry is one of a kind. If you probably loved Ace Ventura 2 and Jimmy Neutron, one of those in the creative aspects is one noted Steve Odenkirk. As a one-man studio, he has created notable cult hits with his work of dumb puppetry, animation, and directing. Though he's made some comedies under his own name and reached stellar heights, some of which are my favorites such as the Kung Fu parody Kung Pao, he has dipped his toes in the animated feature world again and again with Barnyard, which he also made a TV show out of. I don't know if I have much to offer, but he was present in my childhood with entertaining content to boot. Plus, he was a good guy when I met him back in New York Comic Con 2008. 
Developing games are a challenge. But what if you get a game concepted by a developer, musician, composer, illustrator, and voice actor? What do you get? Daisuke Ishiwatari or Ishiwari. This guy is one of my own idols in creating things while being everything for his creations. Influenced by Capcom, SNK Fighters, and Fantasy, Ishiwatari worked at Arc System Works while devising his creative magnum opus. He wanted to craft something cool with a limited team at his disposal, with a different scope in mind. As he did with Guilty Gear, as for a first outing, did remarkably well with mixed reception. As later entries were more refined with a more expansive lore. I suggest you catch Wooly series on the start and conclusion of the franchise. Nevertheless, thanks to Daisuke, he has made a name for himself in the fighting game world. For the past 20 to 30 years, one man needs no introduction. He has made a name for horror with fantastical elements and fantasy with horror elements. Applied visual elements with heavy practical effects as he made noteworthy projects in the 90s. Stemming to now with an eye for action in capturing the creative horrors that have influenced him. I'm talking about Guillermo del Toro. He's his own concept designer, crafter, as he has a wondrous eye for making character in his own way, from working his way small and getting a chance to direct a major superhero sequel, which led further successes his way with the release of Pan's Labyrinth, which earned him much to many accolades all over. If there's one thing I can tell about Del Toro, Perhaps you should see what he has to offer, such as his recent Pinocchio movie and standing up for the medium of animation. Del Toro is one of a kind in many aspects. Take a Russian immigrant. Introduce him to American comics and TVs of the 70s. Set him on his desired path of creativity, and who do you get? Gendy Tartakorovsky. A name you can find unfamiliar in the world of art and animation. Being part of a new generation of creators in the 90s at Hanna-Barbera for Cartoon Network, he applied his influences from growing up into the facets of his works, as well as doing stuff on his own. But when he collaborates with other talents, they make animated magic. Getty's verse in action, stylized storytelling gives him much acclaiming to the many genres he tackles. He's a good director for the Hotel Transylvania series, as well as animating key scenes for films, and plus, he has new stories along the way, especially with his grand work, Primo, and the upcoming Unicorn. Gendy is an innovative icon in the animated world, and what he does bring, brings out the best in what he has to offer. In the midst of recognizing talents, it is easy to forget that they are human. Humans with so much to do, so much to offer, but accomplish so much within their cut short careers. For number one, we highlight Monty Rick Um, otherwise known as Monty Um, a high school dropout with a talent of animating game assets and models and making notable works out of them, such as Haloid and Dead Fantasy. He has entertained me before I was aware of Rooster Teeth, as well as having ambitions of wanting to creating his own works, such as Ruby. Thanks to this self-taught animator, background in 3D, his passing caught everyone by surprise, and it was very daunting. As number one is dedicated towards him, his impact will forever live and carry on. And there you have it, my top tens in this volume of creative influences. Best of all, 
is that anyone else can have their own creative influences, whether it be big or small alike. Post your creative influences and why they mean so much to you down below. Until next time, we'll catch up with y'all with more present works.